What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. And today it's gonna be a little nostalgic, I guess you could say, because I don't have a damn shirt on! <laughs> Yo, who remembers all my older episodes where I never wore a shirt? I thought I was the buffest guy on YouTube. My damn old man. Nah, but today I'm feeling good, man. I just got back from the chiropractor, right? The chiropractor got my back decompressed. And I got x-ray of my back and I could tell my lower lumbar is running into my nerve a little bit. So I got to decompress. I ain't getting nothing cracked. But I feel like a brand new man. New pair of shoes. Chucks, to be exact. But please, if you don't mind, leave a comment in the comment section with the exclamation mark if you're here just because I got my damn shirt off, man. I hope that's not the case. Yes, I do have like fifth grade uh, scribble on my body. I do understand this. I don't mind. You can joke my tattoos all you want. But anyways, back on to the topic at hand. Executions. Executions. The first lady we're going to be talking about today is the first woman to ever have been executed in the United States. And the second lady that we're going to be talking about today is the first one to be executed in almost 70 years in the feds and it's scheduled to i don't know i think it's scheduled to be done very soon but let's talk about the first woman ever to have been executed in the united states martha m place she was an american murderer and the first woman to die in the electric chair she was executed on march 20th 1899 at Sing Sing Correctional Facility. I wonder if they still have uh, death row or the death penalty or the electric chair, I guess you could say, at Sing Sing. And it was for the murder of her stepdaughter. Now, how did this all go about? Let's break it down. Martha Place was born September 18th, 1849 under her maiden name of Martha Gerritsen in Reddington Township in New Jersey. Place was struck in the head by a sleigh at the age of 23. Her brother claimed that she never completely recovered and that the accident left her mentally unstable. Place lived in New Jersey, working as a dressmaker. She married a man named Wesley Savacool. Savacool, that's a pretty cool name. But she abandoned him and left to work as a house servant for a man named William Place. I like how they said she abandoned him. He's some kind of dog or something. Come on, man. Just divorced him or something. I don't know. Abandoned doesn't seem like the right words, Wikipedia. <laughs> William Place, who she was a house servant for, she would later marry in 1893. William married Martha to help him raise his daughter, although it was later rumored that Martha was jealous of Ida. On the evening of February 7th, 1898, William Place arrived at his Brooklyn, New York home and was attacked by Martha, who was wielding an axe. William escaped and ran for help. When the police arrived, they found Martha Place in critical condition. She was laying on the floor with clothes over her head and gas from the burners escaping into the room. Upstairs, they discovered the body of 17-year-old Ida, his stepdaughter. William was an amateur photographer, which involved the use of acid, and the murderer had thrown this acid in Ida's eyes. The evidence later indicated that Ida Place died from asphyxiation. That's kind of a hard word to say, asphyxiation. Asphyxiation. God, I should have studied a little bit more in English class. Martha Place was hospitalized and arrested. So there you have it. That was the first woman ever to be executed in the United States. And there's a, not that large of a list of women that uh, has been executed. But maybe one day I'll go down every one of them. Because there ain't that many. I think there's only like 30 or 40. This is a little bit about the execution. It says the governor of the state of New York... Theodore Roosevelt. I wonder if he is the one that went on to be president. We did have a president named Theodore Roosevelt, didn't we? <laughs> Damn, I should have listened in history class. Having never executed a woman in an electric chair, those responsible for carrying out the death warrant devised a new way to place the electrodes upon her. Deciding to slit her dress and place the electrodes on her ankle, Edwin F. Davis was the executioner. According to the reports of the witness, she died instantly. Although Place was the first woman to die in an electric chair, she was the third to be sentenced to die by this method. The first two being serial killer Lizzie Holliday, 1894, convicted, commuted, and sent to an asylum, and Maria Barbella, sentenced in 1895 and acquitted the next year. So two people were sentenced to death, but they didn't get it. And the third one, which was Martha, she was the third person to be sentenced, but the first person to die 
by the electric chair or to be executed fully. Like I said, the first woman, she lived in asylum for the rest of her life. And the second was acquitted the next year, which is unbelievable, you know? Unbelievable to think a lot of people have been acquitted or uh, beat the charge. I wonder how many people have beaten the charges on death row. Can you imagine that? You're sitting on death row knowing you ain't do shit. And then living to tell your story? That'd be one hell of a story. If there's anyone out there that might be still alive and was sentenced to death, and you were awaiting to go to whatever death chamber, electric chair, whatever, and you got your charges acquitted, I would love to have you on the show. Wonderful breakdown of the psych mind living in them kind of conditions, facing that kind of sentencing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, U.S. schedules first federal execution of a woman in nearly 70 years. Lisa Montgomery was convicted of killing a pregnant woman and taking the child. Now, this girl's story is almost exactly the same as a story that I brought your way from Texas the other day about the woman who took uh, the baby from the mother after she killed her. Lisa Montgomery was convicted of killing a pregnant woman and taking the baby as well. So we can probably guess what's gonna happen to the woman that I did the story on a couple days. If you ain't seen it, go check it out. That's probably gonna be the end result for her case as well. Lisa Montgomery will be the first woman to be federally executed in nearly 70 years when her death sentence is carried out on December 8th. Okay, so it hasn't happened yet. December 8th at the U.S. Penitentiary in Terre Haute, Indiana. Montgomery killed Bobby Joe in December 2004 after driving from Kansas to Bobby Joe's home in Missouri under the pretense of buying a puppy, according to Justice Department. That's crazy. That pregnant woman was just trying to sell a little puppy or possibly give it away. You can't trust nobody, man. Once inside, Montgomery strangled Bobby Joe, who was eight months pregnant. She came to and regained consciousness when Montgomery cut her open with a kitchen knife, which led to a struggle, authorities said. My God. Can you imagine that? Waking up and seeing someone doing that to your stomach? <sighs> Montgomery then strangled her again until she died and removed the baby who was attempted to pass off as her own. She later confessed to murdering Bobby Joe and abducting her child and was convicted in U.S. District Court for the Western District in Missouri in October 2007 for federal kidnapping and resulting in a death. The jury unanimously recommended a death sentence which the court imposed and her conviction and sentence were affirmed on appeal. Montgomery's request for collateral relief was rejected by every court that considered it. The last federal execution of a woman occurred in September 1953 when Bonnie Hetty was killed in the gas chamber. Hetty was convicted of kidnapping and murdering Bobby Greenless, the six-year-old son of a millionaire automobile dealer. Hetty had killed the boy soon after the kidnapping, but still received $600,000 from his parents after assuring them he was alive and would be returned within 24 hours. Unbelievable. I might got to do a little more in-depth research on that story as well, but, uh, you know, I was reading the comments in the video I did a couple days ago, and I was like, how can a woman do this, you know? Uh, not only can they be mentally unstable, but uh, a couple of women left in the comment section that, and I can only imagine, a lot of women, they will become mentally unstable if they were pregnant and lost their child. You know, and they'll see other women having babies or whatever the case is, and they'll get very jealous and they're still mentally unstable from losing their own. That's probably the only plausible explanation for people going out and doing these things out of jealousy or you know their mind just ain't in the right place after losing their own or possibly they're just mentally insane to begin with you know but those were good inputs in the comment section i thought i'd bring that to your attention i mean it doesn't justify it in no way shape or form but i can definitely see how a woman could lose her mind if she lost her child you know and uh seeing other women have their children grow up to be healthy and beautiful could really, you know, uh, attack a nerve inside of them. Never know what a person's going through. You never know what they did go through. You never know how it's tormenting their mind. The incident that might not torment someone else 
could very well possibly torment the hell out of someone else. You know, everybody's mind's a little different. A little different. Actually, it's a lot different if you were to ask me. But let me know in the comment section what you think about all this. Do you believe people that committed crimes such as this uh, deserve the death penalty? Deserve to uh, live? A lot of people do not agree with the death penalty uh, for the simple fact that, you know, a lot of people have been found innocent, you know, later on down the road. But I say if it was a for sure thing, and you know without a doubt that these people did these heinous acts, you know, I'm all for the death penalty, man. Eye for an eye. You take mine, yours should be taken.